Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires. Today the SS Minnow has run aground in Arabia smack dab in the middle of a battle between Deeker playing as the Yellow Gurjaraz and Anti-Demon playing as the Blue Aztecs. Now while the players heard their hurtables explore their immediate surroundings and try to go up to feudal as fast as possible, let's take a look at the respective Civ matchup we'll be watching today. Now the Gurjaraz are a Civ that focuses on man's other four-legged best friends. I'm talking about horses, camels, and elephants. Gurjara camels and elephants are created 25% faster. All Gurjara mounted units deal extra bonus damage. Their camel line units and elephant archers can be upgraded to make them even harder to kill by adding a whopping plus four melee armor and their first unique unit, the Shrevamsha Rider, is a super fast, versatile cavalry unit that can actually dodge enemy projectiles. I believe the base Shrevamsha dodges five and the elite dodges seven, a uh, feature that resets every 20 seconds. Now, to support their mounted units against pesky things like pikemen and halberdiers, Gurjaraz can field a second unique unit, the Chakram Thrower, an infantry unit that with a ranged melee attack that throws discs like Xena Warrior Princess. Now, just like the discs that she used to throw on her TV show 30 years ago, these discs do go through units and can hit multiple units at once. And although the damage output is quite low, I believe the base deals a three and the elite Chakram Thrower deals a four. The pass-through damage is 100%. So all units hit by it are dealt the same damage, and it comes with a very small attack bonus against infantry. Now to help the Gurjaras build an army in the first place, they start the game, as you see here, with two extra bushes, plus a very cool feature where they can actually garrison their herdables. Take a look at the bottom left of your screen. There are eight pigs in this mill, and once they put their herdables in here, it begins auto-generating food. So take a look, 27, 28... 29 very slowly starts accumulating food and lastly to help build their army the Gurjaras can upgrade their entire military industrial complex so that all military units cost 25 percent less food now going up against the yellow Gurjaras we have anti-demon playing as the Aztecs a warrior monk civilization their monks gain five hit points for every tech that's researched so a fully upgraded Aztec monk's Monk comes with a massive, massive 95 HP compared to the standard 30 that most, or if not all, other civilizations get. Now, to support these very cool monk units on the battlefield, all Aztec military units are produced 11% faster. Their skirmishers can be upgraded to get extra range and attack, and their infantry can be upgraded to get a huge plus four attack added all across the board which is great because the Aztec unique unit is the Jaguar Warrior. I would call it maybe a middle-of-the-road infantry unit, but come it does come with a massive attack bonus against other infantry. I believe the base model comes with a plus 10, and the elite comes with a plus 11. Now, the Aztecs, to support their military-industrial complex, from the beginning of the game, all villagers carry three extra resources, and they start the game with 50 extra gold. As you can tell at the top left of your screen, 150 gold. So basically, they either get loom for free, or they get two extra militiamen for free, or you can just bank that gold and go up to castle a little bit faster as you wish. I leave it up to the players, as always, to let us know the direction they're going. And as much as these Civ features and bonuses and upgrades, etc., do matter, ultimately, it's the decision-making of the players that matters more. So let's take a look at their bases while we uh, while they start gathering the resources to go up to feudal. Although I see our yellow Gurjara has already gone up to feudal. Man is uh, Blue's base completely open here. He's got a bit of wood to the north, a bit of wood to the east. But the entire western portion, the entire southeast is completely open. And his gold is down here. Very unfortunate. Our yellow Gurjara sees it. But did he actually see his base? I I'm not sure. In any event, this gold is incredibly exposed. His secondary gold pile also is very far from his down center. Our yellow player, Deeker, uh, I would say a slightly better base for him. Uh, the gold also very much forward. Where is the secondary pile? Very far away. Stone in the back. Where is Anti-Demon Stone? Did not check. That is in the front as well. My God, look at Anti-Demon's base. All of his resources are at the front. That is very unfortunate for him. 
uh, at least uh, Deeker here has a, a stone pile in the back. So base advantage, I would say going to Deeker, although not in a, any kind of decisive game ending way. Let's take a look at the map. As always, apologies to anyone on a smaller screen. I would say this is a fairly long or a medium to long rush distance. Lots of flat ground around, but there's a bunch of these little hills all across the map randomly placed. This might be a problem here for our yellow player. If Anti-Demon establishes any kind of base here, a uh, Trebs, a castle, any kind of uh, unit or structure to take advantage. And this hill as well. He's got to claim this hill immediately, uh, does Deeker, to avoid that extra damage and annoying, <laughs> let's say annoyingness, if that's a word, of having to deal with that later. Walls off his villagers very wisely. That gold is very exposed, very much front forward. And while I've been blabbing about hills, both players are now in feudal. Both players are sitting on roughly the same villager count, although our yellow Gurjara, yeah, yellow Gurjara rather, is going up to 25 to the 23 of our anti-demon Aztec. Okay, he's walling off the entire eastern, southeastern portion of his map, whereas our yellow player has decided just to enclose his units here. Military count, hmm. Start of the game, nothing too, uh, nothing too atomic, let's say, four skirmishers for our Aztec player, a spearman as well, and four archers for our yellow Gurjara. Neither player yet moving out, both of them still accumulating their units. Economic upgrades, town watch going down for our Aztec player. No military upgrades whatsoever at this stage of the game, still way too early, and let's see what they're going to build to go up to castle, although neither player is anywhere <laughs> even remotely close to going to castle. Archery range, blacksmith. Oh, this camel rider is going to be a real, or camel scout is going to be a real pain in the ass, although five skirmishers and a spearman should be okay to deal with it. Will he catch him? Yes, unfortunately, Deeker not paying attention, stops his camel midway and is literally two or three pokes away from being killed, although the HP on that camel is pretty healthy at a good count of 70. What is Deeker building? Archery range and a stable. Okay, so no blacksmith, no market for him. Uh, generally, when players build military structures like this, you know there's going to be at least some kind of feudal pressure. And let's see if, uh, you know, if you've watched my <laughs> casts before, anytime I say there's going to be X, the exact opposite happens. So what's he building behind here? A house. Okay, uh, so... I the presence of the archery range, the stable, and the fact that he's building another scout cavalry, I guess he lost his original, or sorry, <laughs> he didn't lose his original, he didn't have one to begin with, he is the Gurjaras, they come with a camel scout production left, right, and center, his, he is going up to eight military population to the seven of our blue Aztec, who is sitting on what? Still the same five skirmishers and spearmen, and where is his eagle scout? Okay, still running around the map, still trying to find uh, either relics or resources, whatever it is they want to find. Tony the Tiger keeping a very, very watchful eye on this wood line. This is his ancestral home, his sacred wood, and he does not want any interlopers whatsoever. Anti-Demon doing a little bit of construction on each one of these houses just so that he closes it off ASAP. And let's see what the players have seen of each other's bases. Our Aztec player has seen the entire outline of Deeker's base, and he's seen one relic, two relic, and that's it. What has Deeker seen? Just the tip of Blue's base has not seen any portion. I, I, I mean, I bet he wishes he had, because uh, it's completely open, does not see any of the new wall off here, and what does he see? One. <laughs> one relic for our yellow Gurjaras. Now, much, much more important for our Aztec player to get the relics. Uh, let me qualify. Let's put a little asterisk near that sentence. It's always important to get relics, uh, especially if you anticipate a game that's going to go beyond the 45, 50, 60 minute mark. Always good to have that uh, the extra resources. I think if you have all five relics, not including the Aztec bonus that gives you 33% more relic gold, uh, I think you it's something like 9,000 gold an hour. So getting the relics is very important. Now, very even more important for the Aztecs because their relics generate 33% more gold, which, of course, helps them pay for those uh, warrior monks that I was talking about earlier 
and my god i i mean i hope we get to see them 95 hp fully upgraded are really really a sight to behold in the meantime though what what did i say would happen i said we're going to see some feudal pressure because i saw an archery range and a stable and of course immediately he proves me wrong and goes up to castle age instead anti-demon also starting to get the requisite resources he's got the gold he's got the structures he just doesn't have the food uh because he produced i guess one spearman none of these other units are uh food intensive the eagle came at the start of the game and the skirmishers and the archers or sorry what am i saying sorry I ignore everything i just said <laughs> in any event he is going up to castle as well having just reached the 800 gold, even though he did invest a little bit of food into this army, and now he's poking and prodding on the eastern shores of our Yellow Gurjara base. What is he going to do about it, though? Uh, maybe you want to complete your wall off a little quicker. Okay, decides to destroy that house and build one closer to the wall. He'll have room here for three. Perfect placement. And Blue disengages, although he does leave two spearmen to be annoying. Uh, like I always say, these feudal armies... One in a hundred times, one in two hundred times, you'll get lucky. You'll get game-ending uh, damage when we're talking about players with elos like these two players, which, by the way, are 16 elo points apart. Uh, our blue Aztec sitting on 2239, and our yellow Gurjara sitting on 2255. So even though he is the favorite to win, uh, it's not exactly a blowout favorite here. Is this? Yeah, that's fully walled off with trees. So good for him for noticing that. I would have had a hard time seeing that because of that one bamboo tree patch. I'm not sure why there's some uh, oak autumn trees, why there's some bamboo, why there's some pine. In any event, these armies are generally not game ending. Anti-Demon tried to sneak in, tried to get something done, did not accomplish. And Gurjuras are now in Castle Age, not far behind though. Anti-Demon in another 20 seconds will be there as well. Not sure I like this town center placement. Very exposed to any kind of ranged units here, especially on this hill, uh, to get that attack bonus. But I understand why he's doing it. Uh, okay, this hill naturally lends itself to a castle. So beautiful placement here by Deeker. I would have maybe preferred the town center here. So that you have access to the gold, you have access to the uh, stone. But he's got a mining camp here already, so I, I don't think he cares too much. And now with two town centers, he's going to start ramping up villager production. Eight of them already in production. Not to be outdone, Anti-Demon reaching Castle also plops down at town center. He's getting a whole bunch of archer upgrades. Our Yellow Gurjara still has no military upgrades whatsoever. I'm a little bit worried here for Blue just because I'm going to zoom out again. Apologies always to anyone on a smaller screen. Look at the chunk of the map that he has carved out for himself. This is a solid, uh, what, a sixth of the map? If these houses come under attack, what the hell is he going to do to defend? By the time any of these villagers get up here, uh, yeah, you're shit out of luck. Not that he really cares. I saw a building being plopped down and then a building being deleted immediately the second he discovered this castle on the hill and instead, re instead relocates whatever was going to go there to the center of the map. How many villagers is he setting? Just one villager. Okay, so this is not very serious. Oh, deletes it again. Yeah, he doesn't want to uh, reveal it to our yellow player, although he may, he might just. No, wow, look at that. Beautiful placement here by Anti-Demon. What incredible game sense. Had he put it here, yellow would be fully aware. Yellow would have all the time in the world to prepare, even though he's already got his own siege workshop building a mangonel. But look at that brilliance. How many of us would have known to put it in exactly this one little tile corner so that it's not seen by your opponent? Incredible game sense. Third town center. Going down for our Aztec player, who also walls it off. Although with that sound center, you will have access to the base if you decide to run through it. Or not you, but Deeker. And now the Mangonel is out, and Anti-Demon has to disengage. Okay, Villager is sticking around, building houses, which suggests that uh, she might want to start building some other things in the near future. He's moving his entire army east. Uh, there's nothing here. Does he know that? Yeah, he scouted this area. Maybe he wants to go uh, ruin the Hakuna Matata vibe that exists here in the middle of the of horses, deer, and what is this, an Ibex? Yes, it is. And now he swings to the north. He's got a sizable army, 21 army supply. These are now pike, 
these are now crossbows this has a bit more damage output and like i said i i do not like the placement of this town center because now we can just sit here and just annoy the hell i mean put a put another few over here put one over here and all the lumberjacking that's going on in this corner of the map is dunzo although you may want to actually let him you may want to let deeker complete the lumberjacking because if he accidentally lumberjacks this bamboo pile you now have another way to get into his base and here comes the mangonel though that will shoot things away pikemen run away back to support oh my god three mangonels Okay, I wonder if this pike is uh, this pike attack is intended to draw out some siege weapons, so that his mangonels can come and just demolish everything. Deeker himself now shutting off his base. He does not want any kind of side intrusions. And here come the mangonels, but where are they going? Unclear. Okay, while the players uh, a, a, a bit of a lull in activities between the players, let's take a look at their bases, and let's see what kind of production facility we're working with. Okay, tower going down. Okay. Uh, not a fan of this location of the tower. Why not put it up here on the hill? Although it does expose it to mangonel fire. Okay, university going down. Three town centers. 76 villagers. So he's got the villager lead by a, by a huge... He's going up to, what is this? 83 to the 71 of his opponent. Mangonel shot here. Killing one more unit. And now he sees the three mangonels for sure, even before with his uh, outpost there. What does Blue have? Also three town centers. Neither player really uh, building any kind of infrastructure. We still have the original archery range barracks and blacksmith. He, I mean, he, I shouldn't say not building. He's built, he built one siege workshop. And what is Deeker building to defend against this? Ch uh, chakram throwers? Okay. Still... 30 minutes into the game, not a single upgrade for our yellow Gurjara. He just wants to pump out units. He doesn't want to spend a single cent, a single ounce of gold. Although, take a look at his resources. He's at 1,000 food, 500 almost gold. I was going to say, I, I wonder what that means. Are we going to see a relatively fast Imperial out of him? He's got the castle. He's got, even without the castle, he still has the structures, I think. The siege workshop, the university. And now this town center is going to die. What is the point of all these towers? I'm not too sure, but now a fourth mangonel joining into the fray. And we've got two Aztec monks out on the map. Where are they? I clicked it. It took me to a stone pile. I think the software is a little bit confused. And what has he seen? He's seen one relic, two, three. And while I've been blabbing on, he has collected one relic so far. Oh god, now the market is coming under attack. Yellow has to come up with a response here. Blue is the one going up to Imperial first. A thousand gold he's sitting on. I wonder how much that relic helped. Probably not a lot. The game still hasn't really uh, matured just yet. And finally, some military production of barracks going down. More houses in the center here. I love this, by the way. If you can clog up your opponent's path to your base with silly little buildings, especially things like houses... Uh, all the more power to you because that means your opponent's going to get bogged down in trying to destroy these structures which gives you plenty of time to react to whatever you see because the, not only do they have to take the time to destroy these these also give you massive amounts of vision so if deeker now comes with an army into here uh anti-demon's going to see that army right away for now though what are the players building okay deeker finally going up to imperial Although on the back of this town center, maybe uh, would have been safer to go on the back of this one, no? This one can come under attack very quickly from these four mangonels. I mean, he's generally seen the farm, so he knows the town center is in this location. Pikeman getting tickled away at by this one tower that has now five archers inside. And now Yellow's out on the map, destroys his own palisade, brings a shit ton of villagers, 14 villagers, but they're not doing anything. They don't have hammers in their hands. They have axes. Where are they going to, to chop wood? Okay, anti-demon circling. Uh, he's trying to envelop his opponent. Although here come the... Sh uh, <laughs> you know, I, I did this last time. I kept confusing Shravamsha and, and Chakram, and then somebody in my comments said, no, no, it's... It's not Chakram, like S-H, it's Chakram, like C-H. 
And even knowing that, I still call these Shrivamtras. In any event, Chakrams are coming in. Oh, they're such a fun unit to watch. Another castle. Love this location. King of the hill over here. Not a single bit of high ground anywhere around it. And now let's take a look. They are they specialize in killing infantry. What are these elites now? Yes, elite eagle warriors. I believe they get a plus two attack. I don't know. If anyone knows, please let me know. I think the chakrams come with a natural elite chakrams come with a natural plus two attack against eagles. Does that stack with the plus one of the oh my god of the infantry? Look at this. Just like butter. Oh, the power of the chakrams. In any event, I wonder if it's a plus three against eagles or just a, a basic plus two and that plus one infantry bonus does not count. I leave it up to, as always, players that are, or at least uh, casters or, or content creators that are much smarter than I am. Uh, people like Spirit of the Law who have done much more extensive research than me. Capped Ram being researched. Okay, so Blue's going to try to go siege. Finally, we're starting to see some military upgrades, full defensive upgrades for our blue infantry. Similar upgrades going down for our yellow Gujaras. Okay, so we're going to see, I guess, an infantry heavy game. At least in this stage of the game. Got to be careful, though, with your mangonels. You do not want to hit your units, your own units. Already 12 kills for these 17 chakrams. And blue is just, while I've been blabbing, has, been, has just exploded onto the map. Two more siege workshops. We've got five barracks. Okay, what are they building, though? He's got 15 eagle warriors. He's going up to crossbows. Okay, the crossbows are decent uh, to help against the chakrams, I guess. But our yellow Gudra. Oh, you can't stack them like that. Oh, God. <laughs> if you're playing Gurjuras, never, ever go in a line. Because this is what happens when you go in a line. You just, you lose everything. And his castle should get this uh, last eagle. Uh, okay, maybe not. I was going to say with the help of the town center. But he is not garrisoning his villagers. But it's okay. Chakram's chasing it away. This siege workshop still being tickled away out by the castle. And now his own siege workshop he'll see no he does not see it oh mama look at this game of uh there's like a like a cold uh, like a john le carré novel like a cold war mystery you don't know what i'm doing i don't know what you're doing and eagles ransacking the stone pile although does he care there's only 87 stone left in here and these eagles are focusing instead of one-on-one -on -one, four of them or five of them are chasing the same villager so Deeker will lose these villagers, but the question is, does he actually care? This stone pile is all but mined out. And here come the Chakrams. Oh, God, they clump right as the Mangonels take a shot. Oh, my God, those eagles just melt. I mean, it kind of looked like he killed his own archer, but we know that's not happening. Oh, now the Arbalest. Yeah, they're going to zone out these. Ch oh, God, these Chakrams. I have a feeling I'm going to be yelling, oh, God, a lot, either because of an onager hit, or a mangonel hit, rather. Oh, God, it walks right into uh, a castle fires and go, oh, or because of the uh, pass-through damage of these chakrams. But they've got to be careful. Four pierce armor isn't bad against these arbalests. These arbalests still aren't, like, yeah, they're not... Uh, yeah, they only deal a 9. I don't think there's any bonus damage against Chakram, but Blue is ransacking Yellow's base with all of these small eagle pokes and prods. Although, finally, that one eagle does go down. Chakrams have to be redeployed here to the center of the battle. And now he's coming forward with his siege with support from heavy eagles and heavy archers. What is Yellow going to do here? He's building Bombard Cannons, two of them out on the field. Five archers still domiciled inside of this one castle. I wonder if he even remembers that he has them. They're kind of useless with no upgrades. We're talking about a Feudal Age army in Imperial, or a Feudal Age military unit in Imperial, rather. It reveals the Bombards with a few shots to these Siege Rams. Or rather, Cat Ram. I apologize. Yeah, I just call things what I want them to be called. <laughs> How quickly did that Eagle Warrior die? Wow. And he's still being a nuisance. He's still running around bothering Yellow, although, yeah... Stack them up and see what finds out. And now these eagles are going in, but they're going into these narrow little choke points. But the Shravamshas... The Shrav again, I did it again. The Chakras. Chakrams. Oh, my God. Oh, how beautiful is this? <laughs> oh, 
Oh my goodness. Anyone who has ever said a bad thing about chakrams, eat your tongue. My god, do these arbalests just bite the dust. And they're going to get rid of these uh, rams as well. Remember, this is a melee unit. This is not an archer unit. These rams are donezo. Wow. What an incredible band of brothers here. 31 kills for these 15. They lost a few of their comrades, but now the eagles are inside the base. Everyone is poking. Everyone is prodding. Town centers alone are not going to be enough to take out a unit with eight pierce armor. Neither will a, a shitty little watchtower filled with a few feudal age archers. But does he care? His uh, chakrams are going into the front, supporting the construction of a castle, a town center. But a castle going down next to this gold. Beautiful location for a castle here by Anti-Demon. Takes this gold for himself. Elite Skirmisher upgrade. Town Patrol. Ballistics. I wonder what he's planning on going. Wow. Fun game so far. And how many kills on these chakrams? 34 now. Although the brigade has grown from low teens to 24. Eagle still in here. Dodging Xena warrior princess discs he's got to plug up whatever hole exists here is it here no this is closed off right how are these eagles getting in here it must be through here but my god take a look at the bottom of your screen 61 villager kills for anti-demon although he is losing a shit ton of military wow Oh, and he researched, I think. <laughs> I was not fast enough. I think he researched Atlat. The one that makes the skirmishers throw uh, plus one attack, plus one range. Let's click on them. Yeah, they attack on an eight and their range is a nine. So they're going to very much outdistance these six range chakrams. Plus, if you're focusing all of your chakrams on one unit, that's not the most optimal and what a brilliant play here by Blue. Look at how he's spread out his entire army so that they're not clumped up, so that these Chakrams have to engage only one or two at a time. And in the meantime, his units are completely destroying these brilliant play here by our Blue Aztec, who is still ravaging the base, although finally that aggression has ceased. Fresh Chakrams entering the battlefield. 27 going up to 32. And these ones wisely go home. Not a single monk on the map to help them. And my god, while we weren't looking, five relics here for our Aztec player. Oh, I'm going to regret this. Where are the... Oh, look at that. I'm going to show you at the end of the game, if I remember. I'm praying <laughs> that I remember the amount of gold he's going to have collected as the Aztecs having all five. Oh my god, look how fast they're demolishing. I mean, the attack is shit, right? Six attack. Remember, they, the, the Gurjuras at the top right, they do not get the final uh, melee attack upgrade. And what are the players doing for now? Another lull in hostilities. And both players rebuilding their military. Deeker very much ahead with 48. Uh, military count to 38. Uh, well, sorry, 46 to 38. And ahead in villager count, although he's got a few idols that he might want to tighten up here. Seven idol villagers uh, could be a problem. Oh, will he see this Treb? <laughs> this is the game of skirting your opponent's vision today. Although a Treb, a Bombard Cannon, going to start working on this uh, castle over here. But it'll be repaired. He's got 1,300 stone. That castle's not going down anytime soon. Chakram's being annoying in the front, tickling away at houses. But here comes Anti-Demon with three of his own Trebs. A bunch of uh, Elite Eagle Warriors. Although, where the hell are you going? And now these incredibly powerful, not yet fully upgraded skirmishers are going to be here to support these Eagle Warriors. But you've got to be careful. As we've seen, just one or two volleys from these Chakrams. Oh, and you just lose so much. Oh, God. Look at the dead bodies on the ground. How many Eagle Warriors? Oh, he's going for the Trebs. Oh, look at that pass-through damage. Holy shit. Oh, look at the, these skirmishers are lined up very badly. Oh, so lucky is Anti-Demon that Deeker didn't notice his skirmishers were literally lined up to get killed. 
literally, please, mister, throw your disc at us. And now he's running amok here. He's demolished this castle. He's going to take this gold for himself, although not much left here. Only 522 gold. What's he building up here? Okay, stables. Are we going to see Shravamshas against these uh, elite skirmishers? What an awesome upgrade, by the way, that Adalot that um, makes your skirmisher attack on an 8 with 9 range. I mean, that's just super cool. Definitely a lot more um, a lot more versatility in this game since I played it back in the heyday. I mean, I've always played it, but uh, back in, you know, when, when I was first starting to play it in the 90s, early 2000s, when you basically had one-on-one -on -one Frank War deathmatch was literally all that you saw most of the time. Uh, so much more diversity of play here with all these extra upgrades and features and adorable. Oh my god, we're getting an onager upgrade. He wants to get rid of these chakrams ASAP. No, we're not seeing Shravamshas. We are seeing Hussars. Unfortunately, like I said, they do not get Blast Furnace, the Gurjaras, so it's completely, uh, I wouldn't say guts, but it dampens the attack of these Hussars just a little bit, uh, not having that extra attack upgrade. And now, no more side attacks, no more tickling the edges. Both players are now just straight down the guts, as happens in many games. But he, he okay, he sees the Onagers with his Hussars. Oh God, he's gonna take a shot to the face, but not good enough. Ah, uh, very unfortunate here for Blue. Reveals his onagers not when he wants to. And then loses three of them, maybe even four. Oh, loses four of them. That is just atrocious. And while that happens, in comes another wave, but they get gunned down by these uh by this one onager shot, takes the HP down. And these Elite Skirmishers are actually powerful enough to deal with these uh, Hussars. I mean, look how much damage they deal, and it's in a castle zone, but now he's here with Bombard Cannons. He's here with a Treb, although where is his other Trebs? Gone, I guess. Only one remaining. 40 kills for these Chakrams, but look. <laughs> let's take a look at their base accuracy. 100. That didn't seem like 100 to me. In any event, neither here nor there. Hassar is streaming left, right, and center. This is the part of the game where Deeker just says, you know what? I'm putting 75 villagers on food. I'm just going to put the pedal to the metal. I'm just going to swamp you. And if he can find an avenue of attack into the actual base, which looks like there is over here, uh, he might just actually start raiding and just end the game. But how is Blue reacting? He's building pikemen. Okay. Remember, the Aztecs don't get Halberd Ears, but they do get Garland Wars, which will add plus four attack to the Pike. I mean, I would rather still have, I think when you upgrade from Pikeman to Halberd Ear, your bonus attack against uh, Cavalry goes from 22 to 32, so it adds an extra 10. I'd rather have that than the, the plus four attack. You know, you're not gonna attack the Chakrams <laughs> with your Pike, you're gonna be attacking Cavalry. Oh, wow. Just, yeah. I, I don't know what Blue can do here. I, I'm trying to, to think of... Uh, based on his production facilities. I mean, he's got a bunch of... Holy shit. Three, three, two, one, nine mangonels. Th or onagers, three more. Oh, he's waiting for the right moment to reveal them. I don't know why I'm whispering. This is very scary and here they come oh terrible shot here by these onagers why the hell are you focusing on the hussars chakrams wisely smartly disengaged this might just be gg here I, I blue has lost too much and now yellow's inside his base inside the wood lines he is attacking on three fronts uh maybe could take okay i was gonna say maybe take a minute to clear out some of this infrastructure because i mean blue's infrastructure is fantastic He's right in the battlefield. He's got 10 barracks, 7 archery ranges. Even if your opponent is pushing into here, what do you have here? Siege? Your siege has proven to be totally ineffective against the Gurjara army. And wow, look at the game ended at exactly 58 minutes. <laughs> it's like when you're filling up your gas tank and you know, uh, I was going to say uh, you're filling it up and you stop it at exactly 50 bucks, but 
who the hell can fill up a gas tank for fifty dollars anymore? I, now it's like a hundred and fifty, uh, or at least a hundred to fill up your car. But yeah, what a exactly ending at fifty eight is pretty funny. Oh, it looks like these this bombard cannon was gonna take. I don't know. He did take a shot to the face. I see his HP is zero. This one probably will get some splash damage. I see another fiery clump of balls about to attack this one as well. Oh, very, very unfortunate for Demon. Two things. Number one, the Hussars discovering these mangonels. I guess they were mangonels or onagers, whatever they were. And then sniping four of them. And then when he ungarrisoned the nine that were in here. Oh, what a terrible shot they tried to take against the Hussars. And immediately the Chakrams ran away and redeployed here to the west to try to attack these structures, which they will gun down very, very quickly. Let's take a look at the production facilities for our players and see. I mean, Anti-Demon still had a lot of food, decent amount of wood, uh, but 82 villagers. Yeah, he just took way too much damage here from these Hussars uh, ransacking his wood line. Look at this farmland just littered with dead bodies. Uh, left, right, and center did not catch it on camera, but maybe I'll put a picture in picture uh, just because I just to see how fun and gruesome it is. How many kills for these? 12 kills for these four Hussars. How many? 25 once you add these other two. So 13 just for these two, right? Yeah, exactly. And how much? One kill for this guy, but I see a few more dead bodies here. Of oh, no, poor villager. Look at this trail of blood. He was crawling, but where was he crawling to this house? Oh, he needed his uh, his uh, first aid kit, but unfortunately did not have the strength and dies on the way to the house. Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> I got distracted. Let's take a look at the production. 11 stables, 6 siege workshops. How many castles? 4 castles for our yellow Gurjara. How many for our Aztecs? Only 2. Where are they? Okay, so uh, wisely placed here to defend the western portion of his empire. Unfortunately, Yellow had no interest in the western portion of his empire and instead attacked the south and the southeast. And there is not a single castle here right now uh, or ever, I don't think, once this one fell. And yeah, just a couple of unfortunate blunders or uh, is it even called a blunder? I, I don't know. The the Mangonel, the Onager shot definitely was a blunder. But the reveal by the Hussars of those Mangonels, of those Onagers, was a brilliant Brilliant move here by Deeker uh, to discover it. Let's take a look at the stats. 115 Eagles, 133 Hussars. APM not really uh, taxing on the players. I would call this a more relaxed game, let's say. Although fantastic micro of these uh, Chakram. 75 kills for this group. This is almost exactly, if not exactly, uh, the same amount of kills as Mr. Yo's Mayan plumed archer video from yesterday's video. Wow incredible i mean it's unfortunate that his production facilities were here and instead of just deleting a house and going south to support his army he kept going east i mean look at these this the, the ground littered with the remnants of dead blue bodies just one by one on their way to the battlefield deeker was perfectly placed on top of this hill with the da bonus damage against the infantry with the hill bonus and with the pass-through damage, these chakrams are basically untouchable. Kill count, 390 for our Gurjara player, 270 for Anti-Demon, although he does take the uh, the gold medal for number of civilians killed. And now, the big question that I want answered, 4,600 extra gold for our Aztec player. Um, I wonder, I'm not going to look it up now, but I wonder if there's a way to see when exactly or how long he had the relics to generate these. I'm sure it's one of these buttons. I just, uh, I just don't know which ones it is. <laughs> so bear with me. Uh, but yeah, an extra 4,600 gold definitely doesn't hurt. He spent 3,000 of it because he's got 1,600 still left in the bank. I thought we were going to see Shravamshas just because of all of the, uh, elite skirmishers that he had you love to see that you love to see that odd upgrade with the uh, eight attack on the skirmishers and the nine range like i said this game has become much more complex much more diverse in terms of the various features and bonuses and 
one improves this type of armor, one improves that type of attack, another one affects range, another one affects minimum, maximum range, uh, another one affects town centers. It just, it's a crazy, crazy, just mishmash. And I mean, always, always fun to watch players, especially with elos as high as these two, uh, navigate the craziness, the chaos that is Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. And overall, though, Deeker with these Chakram throwers just takes the game, but GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.